Americans have seen them everywhere, and in the last 30 years or so, the impression it leaves has shifted from authority and the fear of getting tickets to outright fun and nostalgia. It used to patrol the streets, but now it tears up everything from asphalt to off-road. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Ford Crown Vic. Ah. The iconic Ford Crown Victoria may be the most unremarkable looking car to ever come out of Detroit, but it wasn't always. The first car to bear the name was the 1955 Ford Fairlane Crown Victoria. The design of the first Crown Vic was an interpretation of the Victoria carriage, and it looked good. It was two colors, had a ton of chrome, cool flares, and forward leaning headlights. It was everything a car should have been in 1955, but it wouldn't be for another 25 years that the Crown Vic would reemerge. It's 1980. Disco's dead, baby. An actor is in the White House, and Ford is struggling to distinguish themselves from GM competitors in a sea of domestic executive class cars. Ford CEO Philip Caldwell calls up then President Donald Peterson, and he's like, Don. What are these GM guys doing? They're naming their cars after carriages. What? Cadillac and Oldsmobile are calling them brahams, and they're selling like freaking hotcakes. My God, man, that's it! And so the Crown Victoria name was brought out of retirement to grace the reborn Ford LTD sedan in 1981. First as a super long two door, and then as the four door we all know and love. This Crown Victoria had a top speed of maybe 100 miles an hour and could go zero to 60 in 13.5 seconds. Hey, it wasn't powerful, it wasn't sleek, but it sold. It was rear wheel drive and used the body design from which the Crown Vic would become so beloved. The Panther platform. Uh, yes. Oh, what is the Panther platform? Well, I'm glad you asked. You're cute. The Panther platform used body on frame construction with live rear axle suspension. It was pretty common in 1980, but today that kind of stuff you only find on trucks. The body on frame design meant repairs were cheaper and the parts were plentiful. That made the Ford Crown Vic LTD ideal for fleet cars like taxis, police cars. And while GM's competing platform, the C body began phasing out by the mid eighties, the LTD Crown Victoria remained a Panther perched behemoth squarely through the decade. Then in 1990, five years before Post Malone was even born, there was a little shakeup at Ford. <laughs> the guys who were in charge when the LTD Crown Vic was launched were on their way out for undisclosed reasons. Anyway, declining sales made it clear that boxy square road boats were on the outs. New CEO Arthur Poling was chatting with new president Philip Benton about what to do with the LTD Crown Victoria. Phil, baby, we gotta get rid of this big rear wheel drive box. Now Art, hear me out. Nobody's making executive class body on frame rear wheel drive cars but us and Chevy. Bubby, sweetheart, that's my point. Well, what if, what if we make it sleek? Sleek, huh? I love it. Make it so, babe. So Ford redesigned the Crown Vic, dropping its friction coefficient from 0.42 to 0.34. That's like me with a beard versus clean shaven. It had a more sleek front end without a grill, unlike Post Malone. A curved roof and tapered rear. It still took advantage of the Panther platform and it added a more powerful 4.6 liter V8 with overhead cam that made 210 horsepower when fitted with dual exhaust. Its main competition, however, the Caprice Classic, took top billing that year Year from Garner Motor Garnering Motor Trends Car of the Year Award. While police departments still preferred the Caprice, it looked weird. Weird enough that the Crown Victoria began to outsell it. Ford was cementing itself as the prime choice for dudes with families who wanted super long rear wheel drive V8 four doors with three in the front seating capacity. And yes, they sold a ton of them as fleet vehicles. People love them as fleet vehicles because of that sweet, sweet Panther platform. Then in 1996, Chevy made a decision that would forever cement the Crown Vic as the cop car to end all cop cars. They discontinued their Caprice Classic and Ford was like, that's tight. Mercury Grand Marquis, the Lincoln Town Car, and the Crown Victoria were now the only option in the boat size, rear wheel drive, body on frame, American made executive class. And this gave Ford the exclusive monopoly on fleet cars. Never slow down with the Crown Vic. 
The Crown Vic was dramatically restyled for 1998 by adopting the roof that was previously only used for the better selling Mercury Grand Marquis. This is the Crown Vic that we all know and love, or know and hate, because it's pulled over its fair share of drivers. This second generation Crown Vic has rounded lines, a cute little bubble top, and classy grill in the front, just like Post Malone. And of course, the body on frame, Panther Platform! Powertrains were revised to make more power, and the rear suspension was tweaked to improve handling. When you look at it, there's really nothing too remarkable about it. It just looks like a car. But that's part of what made people start to like them. Around this time, if you wanted a big car, you had to get an SUV. Other than that, cars were getting smaller. A lot of the dudes buying these big old cars were raised on the cars of the 60s, and they wanted the massive rear-wheel drive cruisers that they admired growing up. But they also had more money than they did when they were kids, obviously. <laughs> that's how grown-ups work. So for as many of the Crown Vicks that are on the road today, most of the Panther platforms were being sold as Mercury Grand Marquis. Mind stepping out of the Grand Marquis, sir? Is there a problem, officer? Huh? I just want to take it for a spin. The Grand Marquis had pretty much the same guts under the hood, but it had a more stylish grill, leather interior, and all the remote access crap that was a big deal in the early aughts. So in 2002, the boys at Ford, Lincoln, Mercury got on a call together, and they were all, yo, dudes, only old people are buying our big cars. But how can we get 25 to 35 year olds to buy our cars? Dude, just think about what you liked when you were 25. Um, Super heavy cars with big motors that could maybe make 300 horsepower tops. Count me in. Dude, yeah, great that. idea. We're so Let's excited. Do it. Have you heard that song, Soldier Boy? Woo! So they took the Crown Vic, gave it a sportier suspension, a redesigned intake, a center mounted shifter, and some pretty badass trim. I know a thing or two about badass trim. Then, they resurrected a moniker that hadn't been used since 1970, the Mercury Marauder. And look at it, it looks badass. And thanks to that intake, it's tuned to 302 horsepower. And some claim they can even get 330. Woo! But remember, they did this to get 25 year olds into their cars. I'm serious, that was their plan. And it didn't do that. The only 25 year old I know who would want a Mercury Marauder is Nolan. And Nolan drinks glasses of milk. Mercury sold almost 12,000 Marauders, mostly to 50-year-old dudes, while the Grand Marquis happily sold almost 175,000. If the Grand Marquis so thoroughly outsold the Crown Vic, why are there so many Crown Vics still charging down America's highways? Fleet sales, my man. Fleet sales accounted for over 90% of the Crown Vic sold. 90%. And once they started going on sale at police auctions, savvy car fans started falling in love with them. There's no shortage of parts, the engine is big and robust, and the engine bay is enormous. Crown Vics are begging to be tinkered with. You can turbo or supercharge them really easily, or do both. Unfortunately, when you cruise up behind someone for whatever reason, they don't get out of your way. They just slow down to the speed limit. It's really annoying. On September 15th, 2011, the final Ford Crown Victoria rolled off the assembly line, destined for export to Saudi Arabia, an appropriate ambassador of bygone American style of automobile. It was built on a platform that lasted over 30 years, the longest in American car history. Even the fact that they kept making it after people stopped buying it is an embodiment of American automotive tradition. It may be the most American car ever. We release a video just about every darn and day to make sure you don't miss any, hit this man right here. If you wanna double make sure that you don't miss anything, hit the notification bell. You like big V8? Check out this episode of Up To Speed. You like Ford? You like Dodges? Watch this episode of Wheelhouse. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut, at Donut Media. I love you.